Yeah, because somebody was asking about them yesterday. We'll be sure, we'll be able to get some out for sure. Yay! Hey guys, so we're going to talk about saws and how awesome they are. Because <laughs> I know a lot of you guys hate sawing. That's why you love our pancake guys. <laughs> but it, it's a really good skill to have. So before you uh, tune out, because you don't want to watch somebody saw. <laughs> We have two people watching. We've got two people watching. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about saws. Fine. We want the blades. Oh, I got blades. Yeah. I was gonna show a different saw, but I can't find one. I pretty much use mine exclusively. Oh, here's one. I think oh. it might be a but. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, if you're making jewelry. This is ridiculous. Small size. Small scale. You really, scale. really don't need a saw. This for woodwork. No. Oh. Yeah, this is crazy. This is so deep. What you want is something. Even this is deep for me. I, the ones that I first made, they were only two inches deep, and these are three, which I thought was more than adequate for anything. But um, let me tell you about the saw. So, oh my god, what did some maniac tighten that? They did. I'm glad I grabbed I, this one. We should check all of them because I bet they're, they're probably tight. I'll like that. Ian! What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, that's not cool. No. Oh yeah, we got some pliers. There we go. So I loosened that up. <laughs> and you guys are probably wondering, what does this do? It does nothing. It just keeps this thing from spinning. Um, and I wish I had my saw with me, but I've kept it at home. I was given a saw when I first started and uh, by the owner of a shop that I worked at. By, actually, it was his grandfather who gave it to me. He'd sat down next to me, because he I sat in, I, my bench was right next to his. And uh, he'd work every afternoon, and he'd show me stuff. And one day, he was uh, sawing and just breaking blades and everything, and he just took his, he took his sea biggers off, set them on the bench, handed his saw to me and said, I fucking quit. <laughs> and that was it. Um, he's like, I can't do this anymore. And he was like 80. And um, so I used his saw. And it had little features on it that I just started to like. Like it has a little place, I, your thumb or your pinky finger would go right there. And I was like, oh, I love that. And it, you couldn't adjust it. It wasn't adjustable. It was set for a single blade. And it was probably made in the turn of the century. And for some reason, it had this little knurled thing at the front of it. So when I made my saw, I just copied it, essentially. I just made it like that, and that's why it's there. I could probably save myself a couple bucks by not having it, but it's got it. And another cool feature about this saw, let me show you, this is kind of a big deal that a lot of people don't realize. So I'm gonna take this apart. Most saws, well, all saws, except for mine, have, um, they, uh, this is what, how saws basically break. I'll show you. Boy, we got really precise fits. Okay. So, my saw uses a stud. This stud is pressed in. These are hardened and they're pressed in. And most saws do this. So, you know, green, genius. Most saws are like this. They screw in. And what happens is 
your this hole wears out. They just straight up wear out. And you can't fix your saw. Then your saw is no good anymore. Where our saw, these are replaceable. It's called a PEMCERT. And you can just, well, you send it back to me because I lifetime warranty all our stuff. So if you have a problem, you That's can return. Right against the, the cord. Oh, it was the silver piece. So yep. if, if you ever have a problem with something, we'll take care of it forever. Or at least, as, I mean, I kind of think of Vincent as the lifetime warranty or your extended warranty. I'm sort of a, it's my lifetime. So when I'm gone, I guess the warranty dies with me. But I've been working out and exercising and trying to eat better. So there's a chance I could go on a little longer. Anyway, I'm going to put my saw back together here. Another cool feature on these saws, the handle will not just fall off on you. They no. screw on. They're screwed on. They're aluminum. They're anodized. These are stainless. And these, so I try to source all our, if I can, if at all possible, within reason, I try to source as much stuff as we can from American suppliers. Just because I realize that that's how people stay employed. Um, not out of any other sort of you know misguided whatever but I try to make sure that we support local companies and there's one wing nut maker left in America there's only one if you can believe that there's one left in the entire United States and they still make wing nuts and I buy their wing nuts and I actually have to special order them now because not enough people are buying their wing nuts so if you guys need extra wing nuts, I get these from a place called Peerless Hardware in Philadelphia. And they're still making. That's why they look expensive. Eight, they're ridiculous. Oh my expensive. gosh. You have no idea. I can show you what a $4,000 bag of wing nuts looks like. It's like about this big. Yeah, they're ridiculous. <laughs> but look at them. They're beautiful. They're, they're absolutely beautiful. Made in America. They're made in America wing nuts. And you can get them. They will. They make wing nuts. They've been making wing nuts for over a hundred years, and they're still making wing nuts. And um, nobody else is. So I'm, and I get my all the brass parts from them too. So if you ever go on their website, if you like hardware, I love hardware. It's like I, I have, I have, I love hardware. So I'm always looking for the obscure. These are called Batwing wing nuts. These are just the coolest. And they sell different sizes. So I actually had some very large wing nuts. I know some of you guys wanted those because then you can tighten up your saw blade even tighter. So it's pretty cool. So let me, uh, I'm gonna go with the, the red handled one because it's like a race car. You know, it's like a high performance <laughs> car. And um, let's put a saw blade in it. So I know a lot of you guys I, I mean, I guess you can push it into your chest. I, I don't know, see what you I really can't see anything. Okay, I had my blade going the wrong way. So I'm gonna show you how to put this in without pressing it into your chest. So you loosen up the thing, put it in there, tighten it up. Loosen up this side, push it. Oh, loosen that one a little bit. Push it. And no sternums were bruised. No sternums were bruised. But you can feel free to bruise your sternum, it's okay with me. Not my sternum. <laughs> I, it's funny, I, <laughs> I. I know exactly what people are talking about because. Um, when I used to work at the bench, I'd, you know, I'd sit there for hours. And, and when I was younger, I used to break blades, just like everybody does. And I remember going, why, why does my chest hurt? And I'm thinking, you know, immediately going to, oh, it's probably a tumor. It's probably this. None. So I take my shirt off and there's like this bruise. And I'm thinking, uh-oh, something horrible's happening. And then it occurred to me. 
Yeah, I break a lot of blades and I've been opening and closing this frame, but now that I've now that I have my own saw, I don't break blades. <laughs> the, practice. practice. <laughs> I can dull blades now. Cuz oh, I'm going to snap a blade first thing here. So, let's do some sawing tips. I'm going to come over here and try and get So I use I use two ot saw blades. I that's pretty much what I use. I don't know what brand. Swiss products, Swiss Valor B. Buy yeah, whatever. They're just I, I use, use all different kinds. Rio Gold, Hercules. They're all good. Yeah. They're all good. <clears throat> the generic and, and let me assure you that they didn't make the blades wrong because i've had that before they no the blades are fine they all go the right direction if you put them in the saw correctly so when you're going to start sawing well you got to use a bench pin for all that is holy and i see i got this little area here this is for tiny or tiny parts and this is for bigger parts so let's start cutting this thing's pretty thick too so to me it seems easy, but um, long strokes. This saw will cut very straight. It's not gonna twist. And your blades are gonna stay in. There's a reason we use stainless. Because believe me, it was not the cheapest option. Stainless is like the most expensive option, but there's a stainless has a special quality about it, and it is gummy. It grips metal. It is really, really, you know, steel on steel is almost it's like a bearing. It will slip out. So if you if you've ever experienced your saw blade coming out of your saw repeatedly no matter what you do, it's because they have a hardened steel surface against a saw blade. No matter how hard you pinch, that thing is coming out. It is not going to stay in. But a stainless steel saw is, they're tough, but they're gummy. Stainless steel likes to gall. That is, and that is one of the main reasons why I opted to go with a PEM insert instead of a tapping a hole. Tapping holes in stainless steel is misery. It grabs the tool and it wants to break the tap. But that that's what you want with a saw blade. Because I hear constantly people talking about our saws and how the blades do not come loose. And it is because it's stainless steel. So not only will your saw not rust and it'll be very springy and strong, but most importantly, it will hold the blade. Um, Patty comments, I noticed you saw at an angle, but I was originally told I had to hold the frame vertically. You can saw however you want. I'm sawing vertically. Sure think I am. I think she's talking about this angle, like here versus... Like this? Yeah. Oh, to get it started, sometimes it just depends where I'm heading. But, yeah. You can... Once you know how to saw, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just working our way around the dragon here. So when you get into a tight corner, this is where people break blades. So you're going to want to just, don't try to steer the, just gently steer the saw. But move it up and down very quickly. And that way you can make the corner. Don't saw your finger. Sawing your finger really hurts. Like a knife, it'll just cut, but a saw is like a meat rake. So out we go. Yeah, if you, um, you know, a nice rigid saw frame is very important. 
and my saw is not light at all. We should get a weight on it. Let me yeah, finish. We should. Let's finish cutting this. But I promise you will probably like it. I the extra weight helps give it a little momentum. It's really well balanced. And despite what people say, it is not magic. It's just a saw. There we go. Let me just cut off this thing right here. So, there's the beginnings of our little dragon. Let's get a weight on this thing. So, we used to make them with different color handles. I think we still have a few. Yeah, they're probably hiding on the website somewhere. Yeah, we start. We used to powder coat them. But I kind of like the uh, these better. Two hundred and fifty grams. So that's about two fifty. What is it, 30 into 250? So eight ounces? Not bad. Yeah, about eight ounces. Not bad. It's, about, it's not too bad. You, uh, I don't notice it really. Um, eight ounces is pretty good. Especially when it lasts forever because we do warranty them forever. Forever. At least my life. And Probably Vincent's if he, I think he'll keep doing this. Same with Annie, she's a lot younger than me. <laughs> so, anyway, we have about 20 saws left. And then we'll, you know, we try to keep them in stock, but, so, got a little label on the back, the red rocket, and uh, there you go. Here's the black one. Yeah. Here's the black one. Looks pretty good too. Yeah. So if you're if you are in need of a really nice saw that is not magical, <laughs> I promise you it's not. Uh, these are available, at least for now. So take it easy, guys. <laughs>